There should be three distinct layers in the shop. Oh, As previously mentioned, some responses are brought about by nerve impulses, and due to the variety of responses and stimuli there are, uh, the nervous system is comprised of different parts. The nervous system can be broken down into two main parts, the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system, CNS for short. The CNS comprises the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system are all the nerves that come from the brain or spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system can be split up into further parts. The peripheral nervous system can be broken down into mainly the sensory nervous system and motor nervous system. The sensory nervous system it com connects receptors to the central nervous system such as the spinal cord or the brain. It does this by using receptors and sensory neurons, which I will talk about later on in this video. The motor nervous system comprises motor neurons going from the spinal cord or brain to an effector which can be either a gland or a muscle. Now, the motor nervous system can also be broken down into voluntary nervous system and autonomic nervous system. Pretty obviously the voluntary nervous system involves voluntary movements such as moving your hand or leg or other appendage. The autonomic nervous system is also pretty obviously the automatic stuff that happens in your body. Now this can be further broken down into the less obvious sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic nervous system is responsible for the fight or flight reflexes. It has the the effect of releasing adrenaline into the body which causes respiration to increase, breakdown of glycogen. It also has the effect of dilating the pupils and pupils and inhibiting digestion. The parasympathetic nervous system, however, has the effect of rest and digest, or the maintenance of body parts, while at rest, namely digestive system and repairing muscles and the damaged parts. It's also worth noting that all of the motor and nervous system are controlled by motor neurons, which I will again describe later on in this video. In Unit 1 we learned that the SAN is the pacemaker of the heart. but if you consider that if you run a long distance, your heart will beat faster. Now this is a response to a stimulus, the stimulus being that you are doing exercise. And the fact that this is a response means that there is some nervous control involved. In the brain you have two centers. You have the cardio accelerator node, which I'll highlight here, and the cardio inhibitory node here. The cardio accelerator node is connected by a sympathetic nerve to the SAN, and the cardio accelerator node, which as the name suggests, increases the heart rate, whereas the cardio inhibitory node decreases heart rate. And this is connected by a parasympathetic nerve in the parasymp parasympathetic nervous system. If you think about it, when you go for a jog, the reason your heart rate, there are reasons why your heart rate speeds up. One of these reasons is an increased carbon dioxide concentration in your blood. This comes about because carbon dioxide is a byproduct of respiration, so and it gets dissolved in the plasma of your blood. The way the body detects this in is in a series of chemoreceptors, which are found in the carotid artery and the aorta. And these connect to the the nodes in the brain that control heart rate. These are via sensory neurons, as these are receptors. Additionally, if you're doing exercise, then your temperature might rise. This is detected in the hypothalamus in the brain, which is somewhere around this region. This feedback to the center as well. Equally, the hypothalamus can detect a, a lowering of blood temperature. Now if there's an increase in CO2, you need to have more gas exchange in the lungs. Now this means an increasing heart rate. So an increase in CO2 concentration will activate the cardio accelerator node, which will travel down this sympathetic nerve, and increase heart rate, which increases carbon dioxide going out of the blood. Also in the carotid artery and aorta, there are pressure receptors, or baroreceptors as they're properly called, I think. 
which can detect an increase or decrease in blood pressure. Now if there's an increase in blood pressure, you'd want to decrease the heart rate to alleviate the strain. This activates the cardioinhibitory node, which in turn slows down heart rate and decreases the pressure. The opposite is true for a decrease in heart rate. This is a drawing of a motor neuron. It's responsible for all of the responses in the motor, the motor nervous system. I'm going to ignore all the generic parts of the cell body like this cell body, the nucleus, the nucleolus, cell membrane, even though the cell membrane will become important. But first off, the, of the main bits that help carry out its function are the dendrites. Dendrites. Here we go. The dendrites. The dendrites are responsible for synapsing with the muscles at this end and with other neurons at this end. Now these three other bits are my favourite ones because they all sound like Swedish death metal bands. And these are the Schwann cells, axon, and nodes of Ronvier. The Schwann cells are cells that surround the axon and give it a myelin sheath. The myelin sheath helps speed up the nerve impulse, but we'll talk about that in quite a bit of detail later on. The axon is the part of the neuron that actually transmits the impulse. The nodes of Ronvier are also important because this is where some of the tra an important part of transmission of the nerve impulse actually happens. And that's a motor neuron. This is a sensory neuron. You'll notice that it's much the same as a motor neuron except the cell bodies in the middle of the nerve. Another key difference is that this is the axon in this case, assuming that the nerve impulse travels this way. And this is called the dendron, where the axon should be. The cell body's in the middle because this needs to sign up with a receptor and um, an actual other neuron. 